Okay, this week I want to teach you how to animate with After Effects. And we're going to be creating a composition and working with the layers and really diving into layer properties and then um, animating with keyframes and then how to manipulate those keyframes. So that'll be this week and we are going to begin to work towards our first project, which you should look uh, on Canvas and familiarize yourself with what the project's um, parameters are. Uh, and we're going to be working with all of the capabilities of After Effects, all of its basic capabilities with creating layers and shapes to make an abstract moving image. So whenever I'm going to get started here in After Effects, I need to be working within the container uh, of a composition. So because I'm not going to be importing any footage, I'm going to be using only After Effects capabilities. I'm going to create a new composition by clicking here. Remember, there's a number of different ways to access the same tools. And so this is one way. Another way to create a new composition is by clicking this icon. Or you can go to File, New, and say, oh, excuse me, File. After Effects composition and say new composition. So any one of those ways will, will allow you to create a composition. And I want to work within the pre this preset here because we're going to want to render out or export it as a HD 720 um, MP4 file. So my composition size can be this 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. This frame rate is fine. And then the duration is about a minute. So it's rounding down because again, we are working within this video format of this uh, frame rate of 29.97. And you can get into the technical kind of history on why it's this very strange um, you know, decimal uh, frame rate here. Um, it has to do with the way that video is read and projected onto um, onto a cathode ray screen or onto now your computer screen, which are basically just pixels that are constantly moving um, rather than uh, single frames that are um, being projected on the film sequence. So it, it has a strange frame rate because of the way, because of the digital nature of it. But this is fine, we can use this frame rate and this is about a minute. I can go here and, and um, down here in the duration, I can say that I want it to be exactly a minute, right? But it'll probably round it. Um, we have here, this is the frames, this is the seconds, this is the minutes, and this is the hours. So I'm going to make this one one minute. I'm going to click OK. And now I have my composition again. Remember, it's only, a, it's just an empty container where we're going to fill it with a bunch of layers and um, then animate those layers and the properties of those layers. Black again is just transparent and we can see that here. And the reason why it's black is because it's just an absence of light. Um, because animation or, or film or, or digital means our, our light projected here. We have it projected through uh, the, you know, a kind of backlit computer screen, or we can have it projected from a projector, but where there's no color or no light, then we're going to have uh, black. And so that's why this is black. And that's why it's transparent. So the first thing I can do, um, I can, I have nothing in the composition. I do have my timeline here, and here's the duration of it. Um, I can zoom into my timeline and you see at this top bar also I can kind of scrub through a zoomed in section of the timeline and these are all ways that I can start to maybe fine tune the editing when it's time. Um, and then I can also jump the playhead again here. I can say go to time and say I want to go to exactly 30 seconds in and now my playhead will be right at 30 seconds. Okay. Um, and then I can also grab a hold of this playhead and scrub through. So the first thing I want to do are add some layers. I can right click here in my composition and go to new and this will bring me bring up um, the different options for different layers that I can add and each one has different characteristics. Another way that I can add a layer is to go up to layer and go to new. And in this case I'm just going to add a solid. So a solid is really basic layer. Um, there's not too much that we can really do with it, but it allows us to maybe put a color in the background, a solid color in the background. So I've chosen this kind of like a kind of sky blue here, maybe. Um, and I'm gonna say okay and okay. So now I have this medium blue. And what you can see here is that I have a folder now in my project folder, which is called solids. And it's been, um, updated to add. So this has been added and then I have my medium solid. And this just means now it's an asset that I can drag and drop into other compositions if I want that same solid color in a different composition. So uh, 
with the timeline here, I have my layer view and I can um, drag each layer and change the duration of it. So let's say, um, let's say I do want it. I just want this, this uh, blue to be for the first 30 seconds. I can go to my playhead and, and drop it right at 30 seconds and I can hit, um, I can grab a hold of the end of this. Let me zoom all the way out and grab a hold of the end of my um, layer here and I can hit shift and it will snap it to the playhead. So then after uh, that 30 seconds, then this layer will no longer be visible. So now maybe I can pick, put a different solid in the background here and, and perhaps make it, a, um, maybe it doesn't matter really, but I'll do a kind of purple color and I'll hit okay. And so now I have a solid purple. Again, I can, um, you know, go here and choose exactly at 30 seconds. And now I will snap my purple layer. So right at that midway mark, I'm gonna switch over from a solid blue to a solid purple color in the background. As layers build, um, the one that's on top will, um, the one that's on top uh, is basically layered, they're layered in order here. So the, the layer that's on the bottom will be kind of in the bottom of your composition. They'll be on the bottom layer. And so the things that are stacked on top of it within this list will be stacked on top of it visually in the composition. So now really doesn't matter if this is uh, longer or not, right? Because once we hit that 30 seconds, that purple layer is on top of the blue layer, so it will transition to it anyway, okay? So that's a solid layer. Something that's important, if you if you have solids or you have backgrounds or things that you don't wanna necessarily animate, but you wanna add as, as visual assets to your scene, we can then go ahead and lock them. And if we lock them, it means I can't, you know, every time I click on it, it will, it will kind of double have that little um, reaction so that I know I can't manipulate it because it's been locked. I can add a different kind of layer here and I'm gonna go new and I'm gonna say a new um, shape layer. And you can see that the type of layer will be designated by this tag color and also will have the color indicated here in the timeline. So these are just visual cues of what types of layers you're working with. And also I have this little icon here that's of this star that's the shape layer. So in order to create shapes with After Effects, I can use um, this tool here, you know, I can use any primitive shapes and anytime you see this little carrot, it means that there are more tools that are embedded within this particular icon. So, um, you know, we have things like rectangles or rounded rectangles, maybe I'll put in a rounded rectangle. And this is going to um, adopt whatever color I have here. Let me go ahead and delete this for a second and change this. If I click on the word fill, I have a couple options. I can fill with, a, uh, with no fill and just have a kind of um, line if I have a stroke here. So I can have no fill, solid fill, linear gradient, or a radial gradient. So I will choose solid. And then I have the stroke here and the same thing if I click on the, on the word here, I can have no, no, nothing for the stroke or I can have a solid. And so I'll show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna choose a solid for the stroke as well and then maybe choose um, black just so it's graphic. And then the color here that I wanna change, um, I'm just waiting for my zoom bar to move. Okay, the color I wanna maybe make it something that's a little bit more pleasing with my purple and blue and maybe I'll make it a kind of uh, yellow color. And so I have, um, let me go ahead and just draw this and you can see what it'll look like. If I click off of the shape layer, then I can see it here. And I wanna go back to my select tool cause I'm still, if I click here again, I'm gonna draw another rectangle with those same characteristics. Um, so I'm gonna choose my select tool. And now I have my, this strange solid rectangle here. I can change some things about it. Um, I can change its, 
the stroke width here, right, to four pixels or even 10 pixels. Um, and then maybe if I don't like the color, I can change the color, something maybe lighter. And now I have this rectangle. So you see here in my layer list that I have the shape layer and then under the shape layer are the contents. And the contents of the shape layer is one rectangle. I can open up and here's where we see all of our properties and characteristics of this particular shape. And so it says here that it's, um, it's a rectangle and it has a rectangle path. And the path shows the size. The path is the vector drawing of this rectangle. So it's its positional information, um, you know, relational just to the, not in, not in relation to the, um, to the composition, just in relation to itself. So its size is, I can change this. I can say I want it to be 300 pixels by, and here it's linked, so it's gonna just automatically change. If I unlink them, then I can adjust these values um, without them being tied to each other, so it won't maintain that ratio. So I can change the size of it like this. I can change its position, I can change its roundness, and this is useful for that rounded rectangle. So instead of 20, I can say 60, and now I have a softer kind of edge to it. And then here I can also change it's uh, the color, the opacity, and the stroke width of this. So I could do it up here. I have a little bit of um, capability to change it there, but that will, that will change. Um, this will just uh, also affect whatever next shape that I make, but down here I can adjust just this particular shape. So I have the stroke width, and then I have uh, taper or wave. Let's see what wave does. We can increase the wave. Right, and so the wave will um, make it a kind of wavy line if we like the, that kind of appearance. Um, and so, what you'll see here, all of these are the layers properties. They're all of the um, this the layers contents, the rectangles properties. And what you'll see next to ev every property is this little stopwatch. And this little stopwatch is how we key set keyframes for this uh, for this shape and so let me go ahead and show you what I mean I'm if I want to let's say put this rectangle uh, set this rectangle um, at the beginning of my animation to go from one side of the frame to the other by the end what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna set, uh, I'm gonna set the, its position and then I'm gonna click the stopwatch and when I do that you see that this little um, diamond appears and the diamond also appears on my timeline. And so that means that I've set a key for the position value of this rectangle. So now I can zoom ahead in my timeline and I can then I can do it two of ways. I can either work numerically here, right? I can either adjust it this way. And you'll see, do you see all the way at the bottom? Now I have another key that's been set because once I start to make adjustments to it, a key will be set. So the way that we keyframe is we set our, um, we set our playhead in the timeline and then we make an adjustment to that particular property. And so now if I go back and I press my space bar to play, now you can see that this rectangle will slowly move across the frame over a duration of 60 seconds. So maybe that's a little too slow. I can click on a key and I can move it freehand. Let's say I want that motion to take place over the first five seconds. So I'm gonna just estimate that's about five seconds. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? And now that'll go much faster. It will move over five seconds from one side to the other side and stop. What are, I can, and so what I'm able to do is I'm able to key any of these uh, properties. So maybe I wanna also key the fill. So at the beginning, and what I can do is I can jump back and forth. Uh, I can jump with these little arrows to the keys. So let's say I can jump back to this first position's key and I can set its color value. I can jump to the second position's key 
under position, but then change the color so that it correlates. The motion that I've created between its position will correlate to the color. So I can click here, and then maybe I will um, make this a, a kind of dark chartreuse green or something. And now I can go back to the beginning of the animation, press play, and it will transition not only its position, but also its color. So this is a little bit abrupt, the way that it starts and ends. And a really easy way to add more fluid motion is something called Easy Ease. And I can right click on these keys and go to Keyframe Assistant and just hit Easy Ease. And you'll see those keyframes will change. Let me do it up here. They will change from diamonds to that kind of hourglass shape. And you can ease in or ease out, or you can just do easy ease, and it will do it on both sides. And so now if we play, we have a kind of um, gradual easing in and easing out of the motion so it's not so abrupt. Let's change maybe the opacity too. So let's go to the, to the um, start of our, of our animation, and we'll uh, key the opacity, and then maybe uh, I will every every second uh, the opacity will um, roughly every second the opacity will go from uh, will um, kind of blink on and off, go from uh, 100 to zero, and then back to 100. And so this will just blink one time. So maybe how do I get it to kind of continue that motion? So if I go to opacity here and I go to, um, let's see, I can edit the expression and I think I need to add a loop to it. Now this is something I'm going to have to look up really quickly. Sorry, I just realized that I need to look up the expression for a loop. So I'm just going to Google it after effects loop expression. So the loop expression is this loop out cycle. So an expression is a bit of code. I'm going to copy this. It's a bit of code. And, um, oh, maybe I even have that possibility here, expression. This might do it. Let's go back to After Effects, Post Expression Graph, Enable Expression. Okay, so here I'm going to paste Loop Out Cycle. Let's see if that will work. No, it doesn't like it. So content this, and then maybe I hit return, loop out cycle. Let's try that again. It contains an error, an expression error. So that's not it quite. Oh, I know what I missed. Do you, do you any of you from remember core three and maybe what I've missed here? Maybe it's a, semicolon perhaps let's see let's go back and see what it is okay loop expression perfects and this is how I recommend this is how I find out how to do anything is to just google it so this is the loop out cycle. Loop expression has a, has a particular cycle. So let's see, all I wanna write is loop out with a lowercase l. Loop out and cycle and semicolon. Or there's loop out ping pong. So let's try to write that again. And it could just be these loop out, there we go. Here, it's letting us find it here. And I want loop out with a lowercase, loop out, <laughs> there we go. 
and cycle. Okay, so now it recognizes it, and hopefully that will get rid of that um, error. And now let's press play. And now it's looping in and out that cycle. And it will do it continuously. So if we want to loop part of our animation, we need to create this expression loop out cycle. So memorize that. You will need it. All you do is right click on the value, right? We can do it again for something like size. Let's try that one more time. And so for size, I'm going to set some keys for size. So I want it to be, I'm going to hit that uh, stopwatch. I'm going to create I'm going to link the, the width to the height. And then I'm going to click through it at five seconds. Um, oh, we can actually go back and forth. Let's try that ping pong for position, actually. Let's try that after. What we'll do is we'll have this thing grow across the screen. So here I'm just going to um, increase its size by clicking on one of these values and then dragging it, OK? And so now what I'll do is I'll right click under size and I'll say um, edit expression and I'll write loop out. This time I'll say ping pong. And I'll do the same thing for position. Edit expression, loop out. ping pong, and that will go back and forth between the two. So now let's see what that looks like. Let's go back to the beginning of our animation. And it will edit those things back and forth. Now, let's say I want the stroke to disappear as well as the fill. What I can do is copy. Let me go back here, right? And so now I'm, I'm really in the, in, I'm really in these layers and these layer properties here. So let me scroll down here to the opacity. And what I can do is I can copy these keys and I'm going to um, copy them. So, and then I can go to my stroke value. And under the opacity under the stroke, which is stroke opacity, I can paste those keys. Ah, it pasted them at the playhead. So let's actually go back to the beginning of the playhead and hit paste. So that's one way. And then again, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say edit expression and loop out cycle is there, which is good. Um, so let's go ahead and press play. Oh, let me get out of this expression thing here. And now the whole thing disappears and blinks. So what I can do is create multiple shapes. I can create another shape. Let's create a star. And I'm going to change the fill. So now I have another shape layer. Let's see what happens if I'm in this shape layer and then I create a, the star. It will put that star within this shape layer. So this is just organizationally for you to understand that I can um, I can create a separate shape layer for each shape, or I can have one shape layer that the contents contain it. So if I'm not, if I'm not, if I don't have a shape layer selected and I make a new shape, it's going to create a new shape layer. If I have my shape layer selected and I create a new shape, it's going to put that shape within the shape layer I already have. So now I can go within here and I can change 
the uh, the color here to maybe a pink color and then um, and then maybe I want this star to rotate so I will choose my star so there's a lot of possibilities for stars like stars aren't just stars they're also like flower shapes depending on your inner or um, your outer radius roundness and then you can also change how many points there are on the star and then again these are all animatable properties so I can start off with like five points and then I can change it to six let's just go ahead and do that um, let me start with zero points and just Oh, it starts with three, so I will key that, and then maybe 15 seconds in, um, this star can have 13 points. Okay, and so now this thing will just kind of grow new points, which is a kind of strange looking thing happening. <laughs> um, I can also, maybe what I'll do is, uh, is rotate this so I can rotate it. I can go to the beginning of my composition here and keyframe. And then um, let's say five seconds in, or let's say I want to rotate it every two seconds. I want it to rotate one full rotation. So then I will, um, well, let's see, at keyframe one, I actually want this to be at zero degrees. So any time that I adjust something while I'm on a keyframe, it will update that keyframe. And then let me go to two seconds in here. And I will say 360. And then again, I will uh, edit the expression and then I will loop that. Loop out, loop out, cycle. Oh, I have this strange end of expression data thingy in here. I didn't mean to put any of this in. Okay. Okay, and then let me lock, get out of that expression. And then, um, so now I have this rotating. I don't know if I like that way that this thing grows a new petal every time it rotates, but you can get an idea. So actually, since I don't like it, all I have to do is take that, uh, unclick my stopwatch, and then it will delete all those keys, which is something to be careful of. Um, if you click your stopwatch and you have keys, you will lose those keys. Of course, you can undo it okay, by Command Z. Um, And I un undid this uh, extra information that I didn't mean to paste into my expression. Um, so I can just click that and now it says 4.3. So I just want this to maybe have eight points on it and then just rotate. Now what's kind of fun is I can just copy this and paste it and then I'll have another one. Um, with those keyframes. So, and then I can hit select and maybe move. Oh, I'm moving everything, I'm moving the whole shape layer. Um, let me go ahead and find my second polystar that I pasted in. Polystar path one, there it is, polystar two. So, let me move this and then let me select this polystar. Ah, I see. I pasted it within it, within the same polystar. Um, so now it's kind of tied, but that's okay. I'll just do this. And so now I have some things animated. So it's, there's so many capabilities here, right? Because you can animate any of the layer properties. Some other layers that we have um, are uh, we will get into, um, you know, text is another type of layer, but I don't want to get into any of the layers. I would really recommend working with the shape layers, and you can use the solid layers to create some background color, but this should really get you started. Um, some other things that I, oh, another thing that I did want to mention to you before I end this tutorial is that here in my timeline, um, what I want to show you is how to work with the graph editor. 
the graph editor allows me to visualize my keyframes within a graph rather than viewing the layers um, within the timeline in this fashion of these bars, which allows me to set the duration. But here with the, with the, with the graph editor, let me go ahead and click um, on one of my, um, one of the properties I animated here, maybe within the rectangle something like opacity. And you can see here that this is graphed. So the value of the opacity from one to 100 is graphed along this graph. And so what I can do is I can click on these keys and I can manually adjust it. So if I don't want it to, to fade all the way out, this is just another way that I can work to adjust the keyframes, right? So I can maybe make it 50% instead. And it's snapping, which is kind of annoying, but um, you see now it's at 50. And so now it will cycle. Um, and this, I guess, is just the dealing with the, um, the stroke. Let me go and do that with the, with the fill as well, the opacity of the fill. And I can grab this key, drag it up to 50%. So, um, and now I can, I can make adjustments to the keys that I've already created that way. What I can do is, um, there's one other thing I wanted to show you. So we're working with these, that's the graph editor. What else can we do with the graph editor? Here's color. So here's the uh, red, green, and blue values, the RGB values of that color. I can adjust the color um, even by grabbing and dragging the graph. So I can make it a brighter color just that way too, because these are all numerical values. Everything here is numerical because it's all digital. We're dealing with numbers. The last thing I want to show you is to use the pen tool, which I almost forgot, but thankfully I didn't. I'm going to go and create a new shape layer. And the pen tool is the way that I can create more organic shapes. So I can use these primitive shapes, but I can also drag and drop with Bezier curves more organic forms. And if you're used to working with Illustrator, then this should be familiar to you. And then I can complete it. Um, so working with the pen tool here, I can click this little arrow and then I can convert any vertex to, like right here, this vertex kind of comes to a point. I can click on it and create those Bezier handles, or I can click on any of these points and make them angular. So I would use that convert tool after I've created my shape. And then I can go in and edit the shape just by using the, um, the pen tool itself. I can add vertices to my shape. I can delete vertices. And then with the pen tool, I can click on any of the points and then I can make adjustments to, uh, to the shape. So not only can I use this pen tool to create a shape, but I can also use it to animate the, sh the, the way that this shape behaves. So within my second shape layer here, I can toggle this down and then under contents, I'll hit shape one. And then I have, um, I have the path of this shape. And so what I can say is I want to, um, I want to animate the path. So the way I animate the path, would be, and let me go ahead and change the fill uh, just to something else quickly um, to make it a little bit, uh, just to make it different from the other shapes we have already here. Um, okay, so now if I wanna edit, if I wanna animate the path of this organic shape, I'm gonna go to path and click my, um, my stopwatch there to create a key. And then let's say at 10 seconds and I wanna completely morph this, um, I'm gonna then drag um, around the keys that I wanna move. So now my next keyframe has been made. I'm gonna drag and select the keys that I wanna change uh, or select the points rather that I wanna animate. And then let's say another 20 seconds in, I wanna change it again. And now I can, I can change the, the handles, I can change the positions of the points, I can change the Bezier handles. And again, just for this first project, we are thinking abstractly, but this is a way that you might create something um, that may, might be more representational, maybe using this kind of technique.
but we do want to just experiment and kind of see what we can come up with. So let's see what that looks like. And maybe I want to put this shape layer. I can always rearrange the, um, I can always rearrange the, uh, the layer, the layer order by clicking on the name of the layer and then dragging it. So if I want that behind, I can, now I have this, uh, my expression here for this. Let's go ahead and if I click on this, um, I should be able to see, here it is. I would like to drag and drop this outside. There we go. I don't want it um, as a child or embedded within this polystar. I want it on its own. And then we go here to this rotate. Transform polystar two and go to rotation. And um, let's set some keys for it. And I think we said two seconds, right, for the first one. And do 360. And then um, let's edit the expression and do that loop out again. Loop out, cycle. And so now both of those should rotate continuously. And we can see that it starts to lag and become a little bit slow. And that's because it is caching our, it has to process. Caching is just processing all of the um, components that we have animated here. Does look like this is moving at a little bit of a faster pace than this, but that's okay. I think that looks fine. I might want to change the position of it. There's one other thing, which is the anchor point. When we're dealing with rotation, anchor point is really important. The position of the anchor point will determine how this thing rotates. Um, so if I move the anchor point, now I'm going to be rotating around the center of the anchor point. All right. So it's kind of rotating around the anchor point. A way that you can position the anchor point, um, another way is using this pan behind anchor point tool. So that allows you to move the anchor point rather than moving the object fixed to the anchor point. So now if I press play, now it will rotate that flower shape around the position of that anchor point. So the anchor point does, uh, it does affect where the position, it affects all of the transforms. And we've been working here again within the shapes transforms. We also have the layers overall transforms. So outside of the contents and here you can see the hierarchy. So within the contents here, we have these three shapes, unshape one, shape layer two, I have that organic pen shape. And then I have my overall transforms. Um, so I have my kind of global transforms and then I have the local transforms. So for example, if I go into shape two and I scroll down to um, position for, uh, let me get out of that. So if I'm in shape layer two, but then I have my global transforms here, you know, it will be the, the position of the entire, um, hard to tell with that. Let's go into this, right, and go to the transform here and you'll see. Um, so it'll be all of the, all of the objects. So what's cool about this is once we start to get into character motion or something, we can animate the character and then we can go in and, and change its global position based on the layer. So I can then make some kind of larger adjustments here with my keys by maybe changing the position of my entire layer over the course of the animation. So the entire layer will start, will start moving its position. You can see it kind of happening.
So then again, once I have my composition completed, and I think I really only animated this composition from zero to 30 seconds. So what I'm gonna do is um, go back to the, my overall um, composition here, and I can use this and kind of cut it down 30 seconds. And then remember, if I wanna export this, I'm gonna go to file export and I'm going to say export or add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. It might take a minute for my media encoder to pop up. Here it comes, it just takes a little bit of time. And I know we've covered a lot in this one lesson, but I think you, I hope that you find that it's quite intuitive uh, creating keys and then manipulating those keys and working with shapes. And we're really just thinking abstractly, this is going to be a really free form experimental approach to the first animated project. So I would recommend don't have such uh, kind of clear, strong vision ahead of time of what you want to accomplish. Or even if you do, I think that's fine, but allow yourself to just play with the capabilities of the program and see what you can come up with um, rather than um, becoming frustrated with trying to create a vision you have in your head as a reality when we are just at the beginning of the semester. That's something to maybe um, save for the end of the semester with your final project. But for this project, let's just really be experimental and be thinking abstractly. Okay, so here we are, and I'm going to go ahead and choose my output file and the name. I never saved my project. Can you tell it says Untitled Project, which is a big no-no. Um, let me go back to After Effects quickly and save this. Save as. And here, okay, I have it in my animation, so I'm just going to save this as Demo 2. Always save your work, otherwise you could really get into trouble. Let me go to my Media Encoder again. And then here I'm going to say export. Uh, let me double click my output file. Okay, it's outputted to this strange location. So I actually want to output it back to here. I can say here to my demo AME folder. And I'm just going to name this comp2 and save. Okay, match source is perfect. And go ahead and press this green button. So it's connecting to render it. And we can see the output preview here. Okay, and it's done. Let me go to my finder. Go to that folder I have. Here it is, comp2, and now I can open it. We can preview it. I don't think this has any particular artistic value uh, since this is just a demo. Um, so play around, but then when we're thinking about our project, we want it to have some, uh, you know, well thought out formal qualities. And we're thinking about color and form and duration and movement. And we can also think about sound. Okay, that does it for this week. Let me know if you have any questions.